What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we did see a pullback during this consolidation phase but we still haven't seen a breakout in either direction for the bears or the bulls. First up let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today in SPY, we were down 1.09% and we still have this consolidation phase with SPY trading between 408 and 418. And remember, these are the levels that we are waiting for a breakout in either direction. To get bullish coming out of this consolidation phase, we need to see SPY breaking out above 418 and 420 with that very critical resistance if we do get the bullish breakout sitting up there at 430. And that is where a lot of the bears are waiting to attack the prices lower. And keep in mind, these bears will not just roll over and give up easily. So you should be expecting a very big battle at SPY 430 in the event that we do get there. Now keep in mind the bulls are going against a very strong downtrend and that is why there is so much consolidation needed while the bulls gather energy to battle the bears at SPY 430 and it is not going to be a very easy battle to win and we may even see a lot of bears showing up around SPY 420. So watch those critical resistance levels and as a bull you need to be setting your risk at SPY 408 and a 20 simple moving average at 403 and do keep in mind the bulls do have the advantage of the positive slope on the 20 simple moving average so that will now be a critical support zone. So if we start losing support at 408 and 403, you need to get risk off because we're very likely coming all the way back down to about 395 to about 385. And if we break below 385, we could retest the low at 381 or make a brand new low at 376 or 370. So there is the possibility of this next leg lower if we do lose these critical support levels. So watch those levels very closely and make sure you're prepared to get risk off if we do break down through those levels. Keep in mind when you get a consolidation phase that lasts this long, you will usually get a very impulsive move. So do expect the next breakout to be a very large move in either direction. And that should be on the breakdown below 408 for the bears or the breakout above 418 to 420 for the bulls. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were down 0.72%. And just like SPY, we are still stuck in this consolidation phase between about 303 all the way up to about 314. So you're looking for the bearish breakdown below about 303 to 300 or the bullish breakout above 314 to 318. If we get the bullish breakout, you're looking for the strong bears waiting up there at 330. And the bearish breakdown below 300 means we're more than likely retesting the lows at 285 or making a brand new low at 276.8 or 269.5. Keep in mind, we also do have this gap to fill to the downside right around 300, but there is no guarantee that that gap has to fill now, but that will be a support level you want to pay attention to in the event we lose support at 303. Just like SPY, the 20 simple moving average is now a positive slope so that will be a very critical support so watch that level closely and as a bull you should be setting your risk below that level in the dow jones we were down 0.84 percent and the dow jones continues to get rejected from the 50 ema and that strong resistance zone right around 333 so the bullish breakout will be the breakout above 333 and then we should see a quick trip up to the next resistance that the bears are waiting at at 340. If we get the bearish breakdown below support, we're going to lose the support zone at 326 and our 20 simple moving average at 324 and likely then fully close the gap at 322. If we continue to trend lower after filling the gap, you're looking for a retest of the lows at 310 and 308. And remember not to get overly bearish until we lose this critical support zone because right now the bulls are showing signs of strength going against the trend and building up energy to go higher. In the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were down 1.55% and we did close back down below the 50 EMA. So, so far we have to say this is a false breakout because we did not get that second day of follow through. Yesterday we got the close above our resistance trend line, but we needed to see another close above that level today. So I continue to caution you not to get overly bullish until we get that price action breakout above 191.5. And then once we get that bullish breakout, we should start to trend up towards 205. You're looking for critical support to the downside down here right around 185 to 183 in the 20 simple moving average just above 181. And if we lose that support zone in the low 180s, you're looking for a retest of the low down here at 175. On the RK ETF, we were up 2.7% today and RK did test that resistance at 47, but did get rejected. However, we're still seeing price action closing above three of our four moving averages and those moving averages do have positive slopes. So we are seeing some evidence that the bulls are getting some traction in the ARK ETF. Look for the next bullish breakout above 47 and then getting back above 50 and then 52. And once we see ARK breaking out above 52, it will be looking a lot more bullish. 
but do not get bullish until we see the bullish breakout. To the downside, you have support at 42, 40, and the previous low right around 39. On the VIX, we were down 0.33%, and we did see the VIX squeak out of close ever so slightly down below that support level at 24. So we're continuing to get bullish signals from the VIX with the VIX continuing to get crushed, and we're very close to having the full bear trend in the VIX. Be very careful here though, because the VIX is still very close to a support zone, so if the VIX is going to spike, it is very likely going to do it in the very near future off of this support at 24. Otherwise, it'll look more bullish if the VIX continues to get crushed down below 24 and then starts trending down towards 20. On Bitcoin, we're currently down about 3%, trading right around $30,000 and sitting just above the 20 simple moving average. Remember, on Bitcoin, there's only two critical levels you need to pay attention to, and that is the bullish breakout above 32,000 or the bearish breakdown below 29,000. Because no matter how you look at this, this is either going to be a double top or a double bottom. So you're getting very bullish on the breakout above 32,000 or very bearish for a retest of the lows right around 25,000 if we start losing support at 29,000. So don't get whipsawed in between, wait for the breakout in either direction and then trade accordingly. On Nvidia stock, we were down 1.47% and we did close just below the 5 EMA, but we still do have the positively sloping 20 simple moving average critical support down here at 179. If we lose support at 179, look for a retest of the low at 161 and below 161, you're looking for the price target at 150. I still think this looks like a double bottom breakout, so I still favor Nvidia to come up here to 200 and then test that critical resistance at 210. And above 210, we're getting a lot more bullish for the gap fills above. So stay bullish on Nvidia as long as it's above 179, and then you can get more cautious if we lose that critical support. On Tesla stock, we were up 1.25%, and Tesla stock did squeak out a close just above the 20 simple moving average, but we still have a very negatively sloping 20 simple moving average, and we are still below this resistance right around 763 to 775. You can get more bullish if we get the bullish breakout above 775 for a retest of resistance right around 817 to 828. However, you still need to be cautious of this downtrend because there is still the possibility Tesla is going to make that next leg lower, and the price action confirmation of the next leg lower will be the breakdown below 700. Below 700, we're more than likely retesting the low at 620 or making a brand new 52 week low at 571. On Apple stock, we were down 0.5% and Apple did close back above three of our four moving averages and did get rejected from resistance at 150, which is the critical resistance that the bulls need to break out above. Apple above 150 should be a bullish breakout for a retest of 156. And above 156, we will likely start trending up towards that gap close at 174. However, below 150, there's still the possibility that we're going lower. So watch the downside support zone right around 144 to 142. And if we lose support at 142, look for a retest of the low at 137. And below 137, you're looking for a brand new low with a price target at 130. On the financial sector, we were down 1.76% as we break back down through the resistance trend line. And we're now looking very close to fully closing that gap and testing support at the 20 simple moving average. A bounce off the 20 simple and a breakout above the 50 will be the bullish price action. The industrial sector was down 1.81%, breaking back down below the 50 EMA after the bullish breakout yesterday. So, so far, it still looks like a false breakout, which means we could be coming back down the retest support before we see confirmation of the bulls follow through. The healthcare sector was down 0.79%, retesting the 20 simple moving average as support. And so far, that level is holding up as support. So look for the next bullish breakout on a close back over the 50 EMA. The energy sector was up 0.22% and continues to make 52 week closing highs. And as long as we are trading above $90, it is likely the energy sector is trying to trend up towards the next price target at 99.6. So watch for a breakdown below support at the 20 simple moving average before you start expecting a correction. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, we are still in this consolidation phase and we are likely not going to see a breakout until we get that CPI data report on Friday. So be prepared to trade in either direction on the breakdown below 408 or the breakout above 420 and make sure you have a plan to trade accordingly. This is a very long consolidation, so the breakout will be a very large move. So while it could be boring to wait for the market to see a breakout, just be prepared and make sure you know exactly what you're going to do. So be patient, be disciplined, and make sure you're always using proper risk management. 
Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. Even in the bear market of 2008, Bank beat the market and had a very positive return. If you're looking for more information or want to subscribe, you can click on the link in the description of this video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I'm doing intraday updates and analysis and bringing new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.